since 1995, uh, we have had uh, three big earthquakes. 1995 in Kobe, 2011, so Tohoku, and uh, two years ago, uh, Kumamoto earthquake caused uh, heavy damage to cultural heritage, including the castle, temple, and uh, shrines. It became affecting archaeological heritage management uh, underground, as happened previously in Kobe and the Tohoku. And uh, very unfortunately, yesterday, we had a big earthquake in Hokkaido. So, uh, you know, the uh, Hokkaido is a northern island. So uh, we have had uh, the four big earthquakes last 25 years and uh, over the country. So it looks uh, there's no so safe place in Japan. And uh, I'm wondering what will happen so, uh, next. So besides uh, earthquake, we have had um, uh, the typhoon uh, last Wednesday, so two days ago. And uh, it uh, affected the Kansai airport where I left just one day before. So I can't so go back to this airport. So that's a very serious problem for me now. And uh, Carpus all world, it affects the Carpus all the UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site, Hongrenji. So um, it is said that 20% of all earthquakes in the world occurred in Japan, and 70% of active volcanoes are concentrated here. Exposure to natural hazards, dead calm, is quite high, and according to the, its World Risk Index 13.5, is several times as much as European country, except Netherlands. Here in Spain, WRI uh, 3.2 looks rather safe. Sometimes I feel this disaster-prone de environment might have fostered over many years, the Japanese characteristic sense of life and beauty, including transience, impermanence, and perseverance. It was the Hanshin Aoji earthquake in 1995 that the Japanese archaeologists became firstly strongly conscious of the theme, disaster, heritage, and archaeology. At that time, we are involved in a variety of activity to support archaeologists in the devastated area. In my talk, firstly, I will review what happened, particularly for cultural heritage, after the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011, and how it was rescued and researched. And then I will consider a model of disaster led archaeology in Japan, and finally, how Japanese archaeology can contribute to the study in the field. Let's go back to the 11th March 2011. The biggest earthquake ever recorded in Japan occurred off the Sandy Pacific coast with a magnitude of 9.0. The earthquake hit the vast area covering parts of the Tohoku and the Kanto region, stretching more than 500 kilometers from to the south, Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima prefecture suffered particularly severe damage. The following tsunami a uh, tidal wave reached more than 30 meters in height in some areas and spread more than a few kilometers inland from the coast, destroy, destroying virtually everything, people, cars and structure, primary schools along the way. Almost 20,000 people died or have been lost. To make things worse, the Fukushima number one nuclear power station was catastrophically damaged and had since been causing serious radi uh, radiation contamination, resulting in the evacuation of the residents. Uh, this will be so presented and uh, discussed by Yoshio later. Definitely, the damage caused by the disaster is the worst since World War II. Damage caused to the cultural heritage is also very serious and wide-ranging. It's far more severe than in 1995. Speaking only of devastated uh, national cultural properties, more than 700 such properties have been damaged, including five national treasures. 
The stone wall of many castles and fortresses were damaged, and the numerous stone monuments in temple and shrine collapsed. The total loss and damage to ar architectural heritage is the most severe in the tsunami devastated area. For instance, in Iwanuma City, Miyagi Prefecture, the half of the city area was flooded, and the temple and shrine along the coast were completely swept away. This is Rikuzen Takaza Museum in Iwate Prefecture, which was completely destroyed. The disaster also took the lives of all six members of the museum staff. Rescue activities were very active in many areas across the devastated region. In total, 7,000 people joined in the rescue efforts at 90 locations over two years. There were mainly two large rescue groups. One was uh, organized by the government, the Ministry of Culture Affairs. The other was a voluntary network led by university teachers and museum curators. The net this network was initially est established by the historical societies in the Kansai region in response to Kobe earthquake of 1995. And the network has now spread over at 25 prefectures through several disasters. It has taken a long time to complete the rescue of tangible cultural properties, but as the phase was shifting from the initial cleanup to the relocation, reconstruction of village and town, problems concerning the protection of underground cultural property were becoming increasingly acute and demanded urgent response. The reconstruction design inclined towards the relocation of the population of the devastated coastal area to the surrounding hill as they are free from uh, future tsunami threats. However, it is no easy task, as we remember that there were over 6,000 archaeological sites in Miyagi and 13,000 in Iwate Prefecture. Especially in the Sandrig region, more sites are located on the hill than coastal plain. And the presence of many under, un, undiscovered states is, so, is also expected. Some mass media reported on this issue, archaeological sites on hill would be an obstacle to relocation. In April 2012, the Agency of Culture Affairs issued a notice regarding cultural properties management related to restoration and restoration associated with the Great Eastern Japan earthquake, as they did in 1995. It consists of four articles. But the point is encourage speedy excavation so as to not delay the reconstruction works and the active dissemination of research results to local people and the developers. As a practical oh, 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 oh. as a practical means to undertake the necessary excavation, Iwate Miyagi Fukushima uh, Prefecture Board of Education and the Agency of Cultural Affairs ask other local governments for the archaeological labor force. And from April 2013, a total of 60 archaeologists were sent to engage in excavation prior to the reconstruction development of towns. I was one of them working for Fukushima in 2013. The agency initially planned to continue this support system for three years, but extended it in order to meet meet the demand from local governments. Seven years have passed since the quake, and most of the excavation projects have finished, except in Fukushima. During that period, more than 500 archaeologists in total were sent to the affected area. It was said that the excavation area in Tohoku region after the Great East Japan was expected to be 10 times bigger than that in 1995. For instance, the, Iwa the Iwate Prefecture, uh, Prefecture Center for Archaeological Heritage excavated 170 square meters in total prior to reconstruction at 30 sites only in 2013. This is one of the largest excavations before the relocation project, the Niidadate Medieval Fortify Village site, Minami Sanriku Town, Miyagi Prefecture. The tsunami washed away uh, the entire village at the foot of the hill. 
And uh, despite the immediate issue faced by archaeologists, archaeological investigation was surprisingly carried out in almost the same way as they, as they had before the earthquake, thanks to the reinforced archaeological heritage management and efforts by the stakeholders. Numerous discovery had greatly altered the understanding of the local history and the public are often invited to open days. However, despite the large amount of efforts, much still remained to be done in respect to the publication of excavation reports and the utilization of finds. I want to turn my talk uh, from heritage issue to archaeology. Since the quick, Japanese archaeologists, particularly in the Tohoku region, have worked hard on research and re-examination to find traces of past earthquakes and tsunami, and have tried to utilize such information for public disaster prevention as a duty of the profession. Behind the scene, they worried about whether or not they properly disseminated information about past tsunamis. Uh, let me give an example from the Kutsukata site in Sendai City. The site is located uh, 4.3 kilometers from the present shoreline. They found 2,000 BP uh, party field and a layer of white and covering the field. They carried out a uh, number of drilling to confirm the horizontal distribution of the sand and the continuity of deposit from the inland limit to the Paleo shoreline of 2,000 years ago. Through the thorough research of the deposit, uh, including grain size analysis, they finally determined that the white sand was definitely tsunami deposit, and then conducted further research to compare the scale of the 2000 BP tsunami with the 2011 tsunami by measuring deposit in adduation distance uh, from the then shoreline. Finally, the research clarified that the same scale of 2011 tsunami have also occurred 2,000 years ago. They also found three historical well-known tsunami altogether at the Takase site, 200 kilometers west of Kutsukata. I remember that in 1996, one year after the Great Hanshin Awaji earthquake, we aided earthquake traces announced with the cooperation of 150 archaeologists from all over Japan. It covers all the traces of the past earthquake excavated at nearly 400 sites. However, as time passes, the attention and interest, interest directed to earthquake has fizzled out, and the message we managed to bring through the mediation of archaeology has been forgotten. However, in April 2014, the National Research Institute for Cultural Property decided to create a database of all the traces uh, of natural disaster across the country from excavation reports and set up a network of experts while developing research methods and the technology over the following five years. I really hope it will go to the next step in establishing a system where any discovery of dis disasters is recorded and automatically reported to the National Storehouse for the sake of disaster prevention and risk management. Then archaeology will be accepted as a discipline more relevant to contemporary society. For this goal, geoarchaeological training, that is, ability how to accurately read the path from the strata, should be emphasized more in Japanese archaeology, I believe. So let me show you another recent activity associated with disaster reduction. Last December, the National Museum of Ethnology, Osaka, created and opened a database of tsunami monuments, which won no past tsunamis and often stand where they were originally erected. Their purpose was to warn people not to live lower than the location of the monument. The earliest one dates back to the early 18th century. One characteristic of this database is that anyone can add new data so as to encourage the public to complete contribute to the project. The data now includes 358 entries from 12 prefectures. The final issue concerning archaeology and heritage after the quake is the preservation of memorial building 
or structure to commemorate the disaster? Who can or should decide on the preservation of memorial structure after the great disaster? Does the de decision lie with local residents, the local government, or even the central government? The people concerned in managing heritage should observe how new heritage is being created as once we did for the Hiroshima Peace Memorial. I would like to conclude my presentation. I mentioned four topics, uh, rescuing uh, heritage, and uh, rescuing underground heritage, and uh, re researching past disaster, and uh, creating new heritage. They are examined and studied separately when back in now offices, but actually closely associated with each other and were dealt with together, occasionally successively, at other times consecutively in the field. I was wondering what we should concisely call this package, but as Nathan has said before, so Nathan created a new term, disaster red archaeology, after the better known notion of developer led archaeology. I know what I discuss here cannot be confined to the field of archaeology, but I feel the term describes the good role that archaeologists can take after the great disaster. From the investigation of true power and the mechanism of recent earthquake, a number of seismologists and the greatest uh, geologists argue that the Japanese archipelago has entered a phase of increased seismic activity. Disaster led archaeology would be a fatalistic subject and should be considered as a kind of public archaeology for archaeologists living in disaster prone country like Japan. This is a very challenging, but it would be an opportunity to promote a number of aspects of contemporary archaeology. We call for the cooperation, collaboration of archaeologists across the world. Let's get together. Muchas gracias. Mm -hmm.